Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is an odd video, it's how to toilet train your leopard gecko. In theory we could probably even make them a little litter tray, which I might do at the end of this video, that should be interesting. But um, I figured I would start in Minnie's tank since she is the one leopard gecko that actually goes to the loo on the dirt um, and that will be important in a moment. Um, and I've actually left some of it in here so I can sort of show you how to do this. Okay, and also I've moved her water bowl so it's out of the way, so yeah. So, if you're not aware, leopard geckos do tend to go in the same place all the time. With Ziggy, for example, she will actually climb to the top of her rocks, put her butt over the edge and poop into her planter below. And um, yeah, they tend to go in the same place. However, sometimes you can get a leopard gecko who will just go like here and here and here and you're like what are you doing so we're going to sort out that issue first if you weren't aware this is what a leopard gecko's poop looks like <laughs> there's a white bit and a brown bit and interestingly sometimes especially with babies you can see it travel through their body so you can tell when they're about to go um some weird facts for you today so say you wanted them to go in one place and say that would be a litter tray that you would make what i would do is after it goes in somewhere like over here and you didn't want it to go there Take that poop, instead of removing it, put it here, okay? Take the other one. It's harder to do for a camera. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I mean, you, you pop it here. And I have noticed this, because I did this with Ziggy once, because she used to just go really randomly, like here, here, here sort of thing. And I just kept moving them to this one spot, and eventually she learned that that was the spot she was going to go to the loo. By the way, I don't know if everyone else uses this word, but loo means toilet. So as I said, in theory, if you keep moving it to one place and they start just going in that area, you could replace that area with a little litter tray. But, um... That would be more important if your gecko is living on a non-movable surface. So if they're using substrate like this, you can actually scoop it up, scoop the dirt that's around it, take it out. However, if you use reptile carpet or tile, you're going to want to disinfect that. Or even better, just use some toilet roll. So Gizmo and Diego in particular go to the loo on their rocks, which is a non-movable surface so i would have to keep disinfecting it and of course every now and again i do do the disinfectant anyway but this is so much easier it keeps the rocks clean however sometimes <laughs> diego doesn't really do things how they should and yeah we have this issue but um if you are if you just do have one whole surface like this a piece of tissue where they keep going to loot is so much easier especially if you have reptile carpet reptile carpet in itself does need to be cleaned often because it is non-movable so bacteria grows quickly but um toilet roll will certainly help in terms of where your leopard gecko would most likely go um i have found it's the furthest away from their hide so interestingly when Minnie was spending most of her time in a warm hide she would go to loo here but since in the winter she's been spending a lot of it in here she's been going over in this corner so she has actually changed where she's going but with my other geckos they go to the highest point and go to the loo and I know some of you guys said the same for your geckos and sometimes they even go on a hide so once again with the hide you could take that out and disinfect it each time because you will have to otherwise it's going to smell and be kind of skanky and horrible um or you could once again take the poop that they're doing on the hide <laughs> pop it in an area you want them to go go disinfect that hide and hopefully over time they will learn that this is where they need to go it doesn't always work out so if you do have like a flat hide and they keep going on the flat hide say something like this i would put some tissue paper here it doesn't look great but it's better than having a poopy hide. One annoying thing that can occur is a gecko going to the loo in its water bowl. It's hard enough having dirt and then kicking it in there. If they're going to the loo in it, I honestly wouldn't take the time to just scoop the poop out and try to retrain it. I would just move the water bowl, obviously disinfect it, but I wouldn't like to try this experiment over a few days and have run the risk of them drinking water they've gone to the toilet in. So if you do find they keep going in their water bowl, why is that? Move the water bowl. And hopefully it's just that they want to go in that area. If they do continue to go in the water bowl, then you do have to just move their poop. But yeah, it's happened to me before. There's obviously a corner once that in one of Minnie's old setups, she obviously favoured. I put a water bowl there and she was like, no, I'm going to the loo in it. So um, we had to move the water bowl. 
Another thing you could try, and this will take away all poop removing duties from you, is a cleanup crew. Now I'm not 100% sure what the best cleanup crew are for like a leopard gecko's tank and I feel like it would take a lot more to break their feces down than a crested gecko's but some people use certain isopods that need arid environments or beetles but if you are here you are a crested gecko owner then I genuinely think cleanup crew is the way forward. So for me in the crested gecko tank I have wood lice, isopods and springtails. You can't see them right now because they do come out at night and the ground is quite dry. But as you can see in the background they eat leftover Pangaea. This is an egg that was obviously infertile. They've already ate one of these, they've already broke one of these down. This one has a hole in the back where they are breaking it down, they're using the calcium. They obviously eat dead leaves and sometimes um, live ones, which is a problem. They also eat gecko poop. Now, if you didn't want to go full bioactive, you didn't want real plants, you could technically do this with fake plants, but you would have to provide a leaf litter and probably some food like uh, custodian fuel. And they also eat old Pangaea and gecko food. If you didn't want a bioactive substrate, because you kind of need that to support your custodian. So say you just wanted EcoEarth. EcoEarth tends to come with these teeny tiny bugs. And when I used to use it with my crested geckos, the bugs actually broke down their poop. So very simple. I personally wouldn't use tissue paper or anything for the flooring for crested geckos. I find it to be too sterile and like the humidity, there's no humidity and when they poop you can definitely smell it. Obviously when you're quarantining an animal that's really handy to do. But um, this is a way forward because I never have to worry about their poop unless they go on the wall. If they go to the toilet on the wall though, I do disinfect it because you don't want them drinking where they go to the toilet. If you did want to make your gecko a little litter tray, then maybe get something like a cheap water dish or feeding dish and put some toilet roll in it if you really want. As I said though, I do tend to just put a bit of toilet roll where they naturally will go, but in theory you could probably make them a little litter tray if you wanted to. So I hope you enjoyed this video, it was kind of weird, and let me know how you get on if you do try this and you do keep moving over the poop to one spot where you want them to go, because as I said when I did this with Ziggy years ago it actually worked, but yeah, this is such a weird video. Anyway, if you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and goodbye. <laughs>